Chapter 11 uh, talks about alkenes and alkynes, which are also hydrocarbons, uh, just like the alkanes we talked about in chapter 10, except these ones um, contain multiple bonds. So alkenes are going to have a double bond, um, and alkynes are going to have a triple bond. So starting off with the alkenes, um, double bond, and whenever we talk about a double bond, we're specifically talking about a carbon-carbon double bond. So like in this case, it's the double bond between those two carbons. Um, this changes some of the geometry, kind of where that's what's shown over here, right? So with alkanes, all of the carbons were tetrahedral, right? Because they had four bonds. Uh, whenever you have a carbon-carbon double bond, now each carbon is attached to three different things, right? In ethylene here, this particular carbon is attached to carbon, a hydrogen, and another hydrogen. So those are the three different things that it's bound to, and that gives it a shape of trigonal planar. So it changes the geometry of it um, by being an alkene compared to an alkane. Uh, alkenes are going to have the formula CnH2n, um, which, as you recall, was the exact same formula that we had whenever we had a cycloalkane. So cyclo alkane have the same formula. So the importance of this is to, um, so you understand, right, you can't just look at a formula and say, okay, it's C4H8 and say it's an alkene, or it's C4H8 and say it's a cycloalkane. We have to be able to name the molecules and look at the structures to distinguish uh, between them. All right, so alkynes are going to have a triple bond, um, which is shown here in acetylene. All right, there's your carbon-carbon triple bond. Uh, whenever you have the carbon-carbon triple bond, uh, you're going to have carbons that are linear, right, because they're only going to be bound to two different things, right? If you look at this carbon here in the middle, it's going to be bound to this hydrogen as one, the other carbon is two, those are the two things it's attached to. The carbon that is attached to two other atoms with no lone pairs, because carbons never have lone pairs, is said to be linear. And alkynes are going to have a formula of CnH2n minus two. So basically, every time you add a double bond, you're going to lose two hydrogens. So we went from um, with an alkane. It was 2n plus 2 for the hydrogens. For an alkene, it was just 2n. And then for an alkyne, it's 2n minus 2. So right, every time you add a double bond, you're going to lose two hydrogens. And that's because um, in order to go from one to another, you kind of have to imagine erasing hydrogens in order to be able to form the double bond so that your carbons don't violate the octet rule. Remember that carbons are always going to end up with four bonds total, which means they're going to have eight electrons around them. So in order to do that, sometimes we have to remove the hydrogens to make room for the extra bonds in these double bonds between the carbons. Um, alkenes and alkynes are nonpolar, so again, these are we're still looking at molecules that are going to be carbons and hydrogens. Um, they're going to have physical properties very similar to those of alkanes because of that, which means they're going to have low melting points and low boiling points and be insoluble in water, right? Because again, water is polar. These things are nonpolar, and our whole rule is light dissolves light, so these don't work together. Um, these ones are called unsaturated hydrocarbons. So if you remember, whenever we talked about alkanes, we said they were saturated. These ones are unsaturated, which basically means that we, in theory, could put more hydrogens on there per carbon. Now, in order to do that, we have to get rid of the double bond, which we can do. But again, the maximum number of hydrogens we can fit, it would be with alkanes, going back to the previous slide, the maximum number of hydrogens would always be this 2n plus 2. Um, 
and in both of these other ones down here, right, we have fewer than the maximum numbers, which is why we say that these are unsaturated. Okay, so whenever we're drawing out the structures for alkenes and alkynes, we always have to include where the multiple bond is, so whether it's a double bond or a triple bond. You have to actually show that in the condensed structure. So over here is the complete structure, right, right there. And this would be the condensed structure. But notice in the condensed structure, we still show where that double bond is. So we'd say there's a CH3 attached to a CH, attached to a CH through a double bond, or actually, sorry, attached to a CH2 through a double bond, right there, okay? Um, so with the triple bond, it's the same thing. You have a CH3, then you have a carbon-carbon, CH3, then a carbon-carbon triple bond with the other H on the side. So you always show where that multiple bond is in your condensed structure. Um, in terms of naming alkenes and alkynes, it actually basically follows pretty much the exact same rules that we did with alkanes, with one minor exception, which is we have to say where the double bond is. So basically we have to name and number that double bond, or in the case over here, the triple bond. We have to name and number the bond. So I'm gonna go through these with you um, as a way to kind of explain how this works. So in terms of our rules, we're gonna do the same kind of thing. Step one, we're gonna find a parent chain. That parent chain has to include the multiple bond. So no matter what, whenever we draw the parent chain, it has to include the double bond or the triple bond. So sometimes it might be possible to find a longer parent chain that doesn't include the double bond, but if you have a double bond, you have to include that in your parent chain. Then we're going to name and number the substituents, including the multiple bond. All right, so we're going to name and number the substituents, including the multiple bond, using the same rules we did before. All right, so for the first one over here, um, Parent chain, we're trying to find the most carbons in a row. So if we start over here, we have carbon, two, three. I could go up or I could just go straight across here. It doesn't matter. Um, so my parent chain is going to be one, two, three, four carbons. So that's going to be butane. However, butane implies that it's an alkane. Right, four carbons, based on what we did last chapter, four carbons is butane. However, because there's a double bond, now we have to change the suffix. Right, so the suffix for an alkene is going to be butene. My pen didn't write my E very good there. Let me make, let me clear that up. It's going to be butene. Okay, so butene with an E signifies that we have we have a double bond. Now we have to name um, and number all of our substituents including the multiple bonds. So if you remember back to chapter 10 we would number it left to right and also we would number it right to left and we would give the first substituent the lowest possible number. In this case we're going to give the multiple bond, the lowest possible number, right? So we're gonna give the multiple bond the lowest possible number. So if we were to number this, carbon one, carbon two, three, four, or if we were to number it going the other direction where we had one, two, three, 
four. Using the blue numbers, we would say that carbon one and carbon two are connected by the double bond. If we were using the orange numbers going from right to left, we would say carbons three and carbons four are connected by the double bond. Well, one is lower than three. So you always use the lower of the two numbers. So if carbons one and two are connected by a double bond, you use the lower of those two numbers. Carbons three and four are connected by the double bonds, you would use the lower of those two numbers. Um, in this case, we want the lowest possible number, which means that we are going to use the blue numbers here. And we would call this one butene. One butene means you have a four carbon parent chain that has a double bond at carbon one to carbon two. So if it was two butene, we would have a double bond between carbon two and carbon three. All right? So then the last thing here is we still have to finish up the rest of our substituents. So we have a methyl group attached to carbon three. So this would be called three methyl. 1 butene, right? And that would be the answer for the one on the left. All right, so for the one on the right here, we need to, again, find the parent chain, making sure we include the multiple bond. Um, so in this case, we're going to start it closer to the multiple bond and draw it this way. So you have a CH3, the carbon-carbon triple bond, and a CH. And then the question is, is, do we go up to that CH2, CH3, or do we go to the left to CH2, CH3? And since they're both the same thing, they're both an extra CH2, CH3, it doesn't really matter. So I'm just gonna keep going around this way. Um, so now we can go ahead and number our carbons. So carbon one, two, three, four, five and six, All right? So that's our six carbons. Um, if I had numbered them from left to right, the multiple bond would have a much higher number. Um, it would be carbon four if we went the other direction, All right? So if I were to go the other direction, it would be one, two, three, four, five, six. So we don't want that. We'd much rather use number two as opposed to number four for naming our um, multiple bond. So a six carbon chain is going to be hexane, but because we have a triple bond, we have to have a suffix that matches. So for an alkyne, it's going to be Y-N-E. Y-N-E, hexine. So again, whenever you have that suffix, it has the Y-N-E. Now we need to indicate where that triple bond is. So it's going to be on carbon number two. So it's two hexane. And then we still have to take care of the stuff we haven't talked about yet, which would be this group that is not part of the parent chain. In this case, it's going to be an ethyl group, right? And the ethyl is going to be attached. Remember, we are using the, the red numbers at the bottom. So that ethyl group is attached to carbon four. So we're going to call that four ethyl two hexine. Okay. So again, you find your parent chain, you have to include the multiple bond in that parent chain, and you're going to name a number of your substituents, making sure that you give that multiple bond the lowest possible number.